If you have the PDF of this, this is great. I'll put this up piece by piece on the screen as we talk through this so you can really understand what's involved here. But some people call this like the language of drumming or rhythm vocabulary, the music vocabulary for rhythms. Uh, there's a lot of different things to call it, but the point is is that we start with four sixteenth notes. So I want you to look at these four sixteenth notes here. We remember that we count them. One, E, and, A. Uh. One, E, and, A. Uh. Now this next exercise is intended to help you master every single one of those four notes to know them inside and out and be able to play every rhythm variation possible. If we start with four notes and we say, okay, how many different combinations can we make by playing some and leaving out some of the notes? There's not very many. Let's go through them. The first thing we can do is start omitting one note and just play three of the notes. And we can get four different rhythm variations out of that. So look here with me as we go through this. We start with what I call the check pattern, which is all four notes. Now the first thing we can do is play the first three notes and we get the rhythm variation one, E, and. So say that with me, one, E, and, one, E, and. Now I want you to notice that that fourth sixteenth note is still there in space. We're just not playing it, but you have to feel it. If I was going to play sixteenth notes lightly on the drum, this is the top line, one, E, and, a, uh, one, E, and, a. Uh. The next line down, the first rhythm variation, count it with me. Ready, go. One, E, and, one, E, and, one, E, and, one, E, and. See that fourth note? It's still there and you've got to feel it. You can't just kind of skip over it and go on to the first note again. That's the first rhythm variation. The second rhythm variation is to play, to leave out um, the second note where we play one and a. Now the reason I'm going in this order, I'll show you in a minute as we play these, is because these first two rhythms lead with the right hand. Then the next two rhythm variations lead with the left hand, and I think it's real good to focus on that motion consistency. So the second rhythm we're going to do is one and a. Okay, I'm going to play 16th notes on the drum. Count this second rhythm with me. It's one and a. Ready? Go. One and a, 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 one and a. So notice up with the check pattern, the four notes at the top, the second note is the one that's missing, but it's still there and you've got to feel it. That's the important part. Okay, now let's go to the third rhythm variation. This one, we're going to remove the third note. So we're going to play one E a. Uh. So if you look at this third rhythm, one, E, uh, the third note is silent. Let's count that together. Ready, go. One, E, uh, 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 one, E, uh. All right, that's the third variation. The fourth variation is to omit the first note. So we're going to rest on the downbeat and play E and uh. Let's do that. Ready? Go. E and a. Uh, e and a. Uh, e and a. Uh, e and a. Uh. So what you see there, and think about this mathematically, there's four rhythm variations, all derived from playing three of the notes. So we omit one and play the other three. Those are all the options. There's only four options there. Now these four, these four rhythm variations, together with all four sixteenth notes that you see on the screen, these show up everywhere in music. You could pull out a piece of music and we could just start circling and marking. Oh, there it is, there it is, there's the third one, there's the fourth one. We can find these rhythms all over the place. When you sit down to a drum set and start playing like rock grooves or funk grooves, these rhythms show up everywhere. And if you can feel them and play them accurately, you're going to be much, much better off and, and be that further down the road as a, as a player. So now let's take these four rhythm variations and play them with our hands. The next thing I need to explain is that to play these rhythms, we're going to use something called natural sticking. Because you got to ask yourself, what hands are you going to use to play these different notes? Well, okay, now look at, look at the screen here. We have the same four sixteenth notes, but I've replaced the counting with the sticking that we're going to use. Right, left, right, left. 
So that's the stick we'll use, that's the sticking we'll use to play all four notes. We just alternate like we've been doing up till now. The natural sticking rule says that when we get to the other variations and we omit a note, whatever hand would have played that note doesn't play that note and the other hands remain the same. So the first sticking variation, look, it's going to be right, left, right, right, left, right. The left hand would play the last, the fourth note, and we just leave that out. The rest of the notes remain the same. The right hand continues to play the notes on one and and. The left hand is responsible for the notes on E and a. Uh. Whichever note is taken out, you just take that hand out and leave the rest the same. That's called natural sticking. Let's try that slowly. First of all, we don't need to play the check pattern. We've done that several times in other exercises up till now. Let's play rhythm variation number one. It's one E and or right, left, right. So I'll demonstrate once. Ready, begin. Right, left, right. 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 Or if I count it out, one E and. E and. One E and. One E and. One E and. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. Notice that my right hand is playing all of the eighth notes inside the rhythm so it moves continuously. The left hand only plays once per count, so it's doing that accent style motion. One e and, two e and, one e and, two e and. When you put it together, it looks like this. Now, we're going pretty slow, so when you play, the, when you play it faster, the distinction between the hands, one hand moving continuously, playing all of its eighth notes, and the other hand only playing one note per beat becomes more clear. So a little bit faster would look like this. One E N, two E N, three E N, four E N. Now, I, I want to really make sure this is clear in your mind. What your hands do is very important to being able to play these rhythms very, very well. If you notice, my right hand plays all of its notes within the four note grouping, so it moves continuously. It looks like this. Left hand plays one note. Put them together, it looks like this. That's where the flow and the precision come from. I'm telling you, you can't count the number of students who try to play that rhythm for the first time and they don't know what to do with their left hand. Or they try to stop their right hand. They do, try to, they do something like this. Or they do something like this. They don't know what to do with their hands. You either do accent stroke or you do multiple stroke through all of these rhythm variations. And if you can get your hands to do that smoothly, your time and tempo control will be greatly increased. You'll be really solid. Let's go to the second rhythm variation. One and a. Exact same hand motions, it's just that the left hand is playing the other note on a. Uh. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Looks like this. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Let's try that together. Two, ready, go. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one. Got that one. Next rhythm variation, things change a little. Now we're leaving out the third note. Well, the third note, you can see from the sticking that we have written, that I have written there, you can see that the third note is played by the right hand. So now the right hand is only gonna play one, and that's it. So it's gonna do the accent style motion. The left hand, however, is playing all of its notes, E and A, uh, so it's gonna move continuously. This rhythm would be counted 1 E, a 2 E, a 3 E, a 4 E, a 1. So when we put it together, I'm going to count in, let's, when we count these rhythms, let's count them in 4-4 in four, four time. I just think it's easier to do that because that's the way they're going to be in the ultimate exercise anyways. So it looks like this. 1 E, a 2 E, a 3 E, a 4 E, a 1 E, a 2 E, a 3 E, a 4 E, a 1. Notice my left hand. E, uh, E, uh, E, uh, E, uh, right hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Put them together. 
One E, a two E, a three E, a four E, a one E, a two E, a three E, a four E, a one. Make sense? Now, getting your hands to flow together like that and know the proper motion is, is real important. Just keep working on that. The fourth rhythm variation is E and a. Uh. So the left hand again plays all its notes. The right hand only plays on the and count. So it looks like this. Ready, go. E and a, 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 E and a one. All the downbeats are silent. So that one's that one's a little trickier. So you gotta fill those downbeat pulse. That downbeat pulse. E and a t e and a t e and a t e and a t e and a. That downbeat is a rest, but it's still there and you've got to feel it. Okay, so there you have the four rhythm variations using three of the notes. Now, we want, what we want to do next is put all of those rhythm variations together in an exercise that allows you to practice transitioning from rhythm to rhythm and getting it all to flow really well in your hands. Uh, the, the, the first simplest way to do that is in an exercise I call 16th note timing. This is certainly not an exercise I came up with. This has been around forever. And it's a fabulous exercise to gain mastery over these rhythms. The first way we're going to play it is we're going to play this all the 16th notes, what I call the check pattern. We're going to play that for a measure and then the first rhythm variation. Then we'll repeat that check pattern measure again, then the second rhythm variation, and so forth. So we'll play the check pattern before each rhythm variation. Now to do this, I'll demonstrate. I'm going to turn on a metronome. Because once we start putting this all together, it's very important that you can feel that quarter note pulse and you know exactly where we are in every single measure. I'm going to play it, then we're going to count it, and we'll, we'll do this together. So I'm going to go, this is 85 beats a minute. So this is not real fast, but I think this is a good place to start. One. So I'm going to play through the whole thing. You can follow along and keep track of the beat and understand what's going on. One, two, three, four. Okay, so hopefully you could feel all of that. Now let's do that again, and I want you to do this with me, but let's count it out before we actually play it together. And we're gonna go even just a little bit slower so you can really feel the pulse and see how these rhythms work. I'm gonna take the metronome down to 70 beats a minute. Okay, so we're at one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Let's count out what I just played. So look here on the screen. It's all laid out there for you. Follow along and count it out loud with me. One, two, ready, go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and two E and three E and four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E a two E a three E a four E. A one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a 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 one. That last measure, I really like the way that last measure groups because that metronome click is right in that space. E and a e and a e and a. Now this isn't just a bunch of words; these are rhythms, and you've got to feel them in your body. They've got a groove; it's got to be solid, and you've got to say those rhythms with some energy and precision and start to feel this time inside of you that's going to serve you when you play and try to really create great music. Now, let's try playing that. Uh, if this is a bit much at first for you, you may have to go back and work on each individual measure and get your hands flowing, playing each measure, and then put it back together again. Also, make sure you realize the transition between moving a hand continuously and then changing it to moving once per beat. Because each hand is flowing between the accent style stroke and the multiple style stroke that we've been playing all along. And that's the secret to playing this exercise well, is to know what to do with your hands. 
So I'm going to take it back up to 85 beats a minute. So there's the tempo. Play along with me. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That is 16th note timing. And uh, until you have those rhythms mastered and you can use your hands well and flow through all of those, you, you've got you got to practice. You got to learn how to do that because that will be a huge limitation to you. When you try to sit down to the drum kit, when you uh, try to do anything else, you're going to be limited. You've got to be able to play those rhythms. So work on that one hard. Now, we're not done because we, those are the rhythm variations that are possible playing three of the notes. The next obvious possibility is to create all the possible rhythm, all the rhythm variations we can using two of the notes. So let's talk through those carefully. And again, I've organized these in an order that is based on the leading hand, because I think that you need to be aware of the way your hands play through the rhythm. So that's the why I, why, why I put them in this order. The first variation possible is to play the first two notes. So let's start with the first four 16th notes. We've got those at the top of the screen. Now let's look at all these variations and how they relate to the four 16th notes. So now let's count the first rhythm variation. The first variation is to play the first two notes, one E. Now I'm gonna turn on the metronome for this. I'm gonna slow it back down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to play 16th notes lightly so we can be aware of that subdivision of all the 16ths and we're going to count each of these variations. So the first one is 1 E, 2, ready, count, 1 E, 2 E, 3 E, 4 E, 1 E, 2 E, 3 E, 4 E, 1 E, 2 E, 3 E, 4 E, 1 E, 2 E, 3 E, 4 E. Again, very important to feel all four notes, even though you're only playing two. That's what the tapping is here for. Feel all of it. Let's go to the next one. I organize these rhythms in the order I have based on the leading hand. I think the motion mastery flows really well when you play them in this order. So the next one is the other right hand lead rhythm, which is anda. Let's try that one. See that on the screen? Anda. Two. Ready, count. Anda, 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 anda. Really feel the groove. Make it flow nice and steady. The next one moves over to the left hand lead rhythms, which starts with E and. The second and third notes, E and. Let's do that one. Ready, count. E and, 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 E and. Now, those have this groove to them. You got to feel the groove and make those rhythms flow. The E uh, based rhythms that lead with the left hand, especially when there's nothing happening on the downbeat, it's important that you really feel those and make them flow. You got to know where that downbeat is. The metronome beep is real important, even though you're not playing that note. Fourth one is one and uh. So this is the, the group of two notes starts with the left hand, a uh, one. So let's count the fourth rhythm. Ready, and one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. Now, there are two more possibilities in this set, and that is to play 
the first and third notes, which are all the right hands. That's easy. Let's do that one real quick. That's just one and two and. Ready, go. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Now when we play this in a moment, you can see already that that's going to be all the right hand notes. That's easy. The last one is certainly the hardest, just the E's and U's. So concentrate on this one. Ready, go. E, A, 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 one. Now, that one takes some practice, and there's a few tricks that you can use to 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 get that one mastered. One is that. First of all, the left hand moves continuously when we play that rhythm. The other thing you can do is to play your right hand on your leg or something to keep both hands moving and help you get a flow for those E uh, rhythms inside of that 16th note pulse. Okay, so those are the, the six possibilities using two of the notes. Now the last possibility is to play just one of the notes. This is very obvious. We can play one. We can play and, we can play E, and we can play a. Uh. The first two are the right hand notes, the second two are the left hand notes. Let's count those out carefully. Okay, so you see this first one here? One, very easy. Ready, and. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. All right, let's go to the next one. Also, this one's pretty easy. The and count. Ready, and. And, 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 and. Okay, let's go to the third one. Now, this is the E count. This is the left hand note. A little more syncopated, so be real precise. Fill all of the 16ths. Ready, count. E. E, 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 E. The E and the and are the cool notes. So you got to really make those groove. The last one, a. Uh. Ready, go. A, 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 a one. Now, the last possibility is certainly important to remember, and that is to play none of the notes. So if you look at all of those rhythm variations possible, that's it. There's no other options. And I don't think any drummer in the world is ever too good to not continue to practice those timing exercises. Different tempos, different dynamics, and practice counting and playing, all kinds of variations. And the end result is that you really know where every one of those four sixteenth notes are. And then as you go into reading music and playing in any kind of situation you might find yourself in, you are going to be solid and strong and have great time and tempo control. So master all of those exercises. Now these duple rhythms make up the bulk of music. I would say 85-90% of everything you encounter in music is literally made up of the rhythms we just went through. But there is another category of rhythms that's very important and very prominent, and that would be triple meter rhythms, triplets. Instead of four notes in a beat, we have three notes in a beat. So the next thing we're going to do in the next lesson is go through all of those variations for triplets. By the time you've mastered the 16th note duple variations and the triplet variations, and there's even fewer of those, you will have mastered 99.9% .9 of all the rhythms that are used in, in most music and be very, very solid in your playing and in your tempo control and rhythm reading and performance. So good luck. Practice all of those. Let's go on to triplets.